Today I want to talk about Chris McCandless and Into the Wild, which was a very famous movie and best-selling book. The book was written by John Krakauer, the movie was directed by Sean Penn and Emil Hirsch played the protagonist, who of course was Chris McCandless. This was a really interesting story, but also very sad and sad because it's true. It's also one of the most heavily talked about and debated stories in modern times in terms of outdoor adventures. I first read this book, I think it was around 10, 10 years ago. I watched the movie so soon after. I was very inspired at the time and I'm gonna talk about that later on in the video before I actually account for the story itself. But what was Into the Wild all about and what was the real story behind Christopher McCandless? Let's find out. So, Chris McCandless was born on February 12th, 1968 in El Segundo, California. His father was an aerospace engineer, his mother Billy was the head of a small business consultancy agency, and together with his little sister Corinne, they grew up in a house in Annandale, Virginia, in Washington. According to his sister Corinne, they had a quite a, an outdoorsy type of upbringing, you know, so they were going hiking and camping and having all these little kind of adventures and they were grateful for that too. Later on, Chris went to Emory University in Georgia. He excelled at anthropology and history. He was the captain of the school running team. He wrote for the college campus newspaper. He was an avid reader and he seemed to be just interested in life in general around about that time. But it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows back home because also according to Corinne, they shared a very traumatic childhood. Their father moved between two different households. He had a wife and children in each one and he was not only controlling but prone to quite angry outbursts which often turned physical. And this verbal and physical abuse would eventually find its way toward Chris. And when things got overheated in the house this was when Chris had come and grab Corinne and get them out of the house. And This is why she was always saying that Chris was a very protective and strong big brother who was always there for her. But it should also go some way to explain him why Chris essentially disowned his parents, why he disconnected with his family and decided to go traveling around America for two years without keeping in touch with his family. He did occasionally send secret letters to his sister Corinne, but otherwise his family never knew where he was, what he was doing or where he was going. As a self-styled tramp, Chris travelled around America for two years, you know, hitchhiking between towns, riding freight trains, hiking, kayaking. In fact, one of the trips he took was quite impressive. He kayaked down a very large portion of the Colorado River while camping the entire time. And anyway, the point being that he had quite a bit of outdoor experience in general and a reasonable idea of how to look after himself. His ideals around that time, they echoed some of the great philosophers like Waldo Emerson or Henry David Thoreau. And we even know from re reading Chris's journal that he was reading Walden by Thoreau, which is a book about living in the semi-isolation in the woods. And Chris also took many short-term jobs along the way. So he was working on farms, just taking up odd jobs to help him get by. But this is where I believe his story and his fate took a major twist because from reading Chris's journal it's very clear that he's becoming very very disillusioned with life and he actually wrote this in his journal on February 3rd 1991. I'm in Los Angeles. I've come to obtain an identification card and a job but it feels odd submerging myself into this society. This may not have been as good of an idea as I thought. It is time to return back to the road. And then later that year, while Chris is working in McDonald's in Bullhead City, he said this. 
November 14th, 1991. I'm living in Bullhead City, Arizona, and I'm working at a fast food restaurant called McDonald's. This life is unpleasant and hellish. I'm liked by my boss, but my, I am getting the idea that my co-workers are not fond of me. This life, the life of taking orders and preparing the wants of others, seem to be just a barrier in my search for joy. And this contempt or disillusion, it is illustrated in the movie and it's certainly illustrated in the book by John Krakauer, but I think from reading his journal, you can gather just how discontent he is feeling and just how much he is yearning for more, more from life, more adventure in life, more interest in life, more meaning and purpose. My point that I'm trying to make here is that I believe the overarching theme to Chris McCann's story is that he is always yearning for more and he's finding it very hard to feel satisfied. And for this reason, he's led to Alaska and the idea that he wants to go and live off the land. When Chris finally made it to Alaska, he set his sights on the Stampede Trail. The Stampede Trail is approximately 20 miles long and it was initially built for the purposes of mining back in the early to mid 1900s. The construction company that was building this road actually dragged a big transit city bus into the middle of the bush. It was later to become known as Bus 142 or the Magic Bus as Chris would call it. But this bus was intended to be a shelter or accommodation for the road workers but the trail the road the bus everything was abandoned less than a year later and left for the wild to reclaim so essentially the stampede trail the old road it retreated back into becoming just a very rugged wild trail that chris would eventually set foot on the stampede trail begins near a town of healy and it's close to denali national park the main obstacle on this trail is the teclanica river which intersects it this river expands and grows in size and volume in the summer months when the nearby glacier melts now in april 1992 a man by the name of jim galleon picked up chris mccandless and brought him to the beginning of the stampede trail Upon noticing his light backpack, his insufficient equipment and his lack of supplies, this man offered to help Chris. He said he would take him to the large town of Anchorage where he'd buy him better equipment and better supplies for his journey. Mr. Gallion was an electrician by trade but an experienced woodsman and hunter so he knew a lot about the harsh environment that Chris was about to throw himself into and was very worried about Chris's safety and ability to survive in there. He did give Chris a pair of winter boots and some sandwiches, but ultimately Chris turned down his offers of assistance and continued on his way into the wild. And Jim Gallion was the very last person to see Chris McCandless alive. Chris had five kilograms of rice in his bag, a 22 caliber rifle and some other possessions. He wrote this in his diary on the very first day. April 28th, 1992. I am entering the bush. I found a 22 caliber Remington and I hope it will serve me well. I've been walking for God knows how long. I do not have much food or clothing and it seems as if I had not prepared enough for this part of my journey. Shortly after this, he crossed over the river I mentioned earlier on, the Teclanica River, and he happened to cross the old transit bus, 142. Chris would later call this the Magic Bus. According to the book Into the Wild, Chris had initially set out to walk all the way to the Bering Sea, so he went past bus 142, but he was then deterred by the Alaskan bush and decided to double back to the bus. When he got back to the bus, he then decided to create a sort of a base for himself and to live off the land, which he initially set out to do anyway. So he was hunting small animals in the area, although he did kill a moose at one point, and he was foraging for edible plants and then obviously sleeping 
in the bus overnight. And he did this for at least 113 days, which we know because he documented this many days in his diary. At this point, he decided to leave the bush and it was also apparent that he'd become sick. On July 3rd, 1992, Chris made this entry in his journal. I am attempting to leave the bush. I am not in the correct condition to live like this. In order to leave, I must cross the Teclanica River. The only problem is that the river has swelled to over five times its normal size and has become violent and uncrossable. I have become lonely and scared. If I attempt to cross, I will surely be swept to my death. Is it worth it? Was any of this worth it? The task proves impossible and I make my way back to the bus. Unfortunately, Chris didn't know about the hand-operated cable car just 800 meters down from his crossing point that would have enabled him to cross the river safely. September the 6th, 1992, a group of hunters were looking for shelter in the area when they happened to cross bus 142. And when they stepped inside, they found the decomposing remains of Christopher McCandless. He left this note attached to the door of the bus. Attention possible visitors, SOS. I need your help. I am injured, near death and too weak to hike out of here. I am all alone, this is no joke. In the name of God, please remain to save me. I am out collecting berries close by and shall return this evening. Thank you, Christopher McCandless. It's believed that Chris had died two weeks before the hunters arrived at the bus and at the time of his death, he weighed just 67 pounds. The official autopsy cited starvation as the cause of death, but there's a lot of debate there's still debate about why or how chris died and if you look at chris's journal he cites the seeds of the eskimo potato as being the reason why he fell ill and john cracker or the author of into the wild also insists there was a harmful agent within these seeds which caused chris to fall ill and to eventually die either way the book went on to become a bestseller and then a major motion picture directed by sean penn Chris also became a cult-like figure and the Stampede Trail and Bus 142 became a sort of a pilgrimage which also was a problem because some of these pilgrims would also die trying to reach the bus. In fact, Bus 142 was eventually airlifted out of the wild and away from this area to dissuade people from trying to hike the Stampede Trail and to reach the bus where Chris had passed away. Today there seems to be two schools of thought around the Christopher McCandless story with one camp seeing Chris as a, a kind of a hero and maybe even an idealist along the lines of Henry David Thoreau while the other camp sees Chris as an irresponsible and ill-prepared young man and some even say that he got what he deserved. As for my own thoughts, I certainly don't think that Chris got what he deserved because of the nature of some of my own trips in recent years I can relate to some of Chris's thoughts and some of the risks that he has taken and I think this is what divides a lot of people too because I feel like we play between two extremes in life. One extreme is characterised by danger and going too far and the other extreme is characterised by playing it too safe and we all have a different opinion as to what's too safe and what's too far but we don't know exactly where we should be sitting in between these two extremes. And so we debate it and we're always going to debate it. I also know that whatever I say right now is going to seem somewhat biased or flawed because the truth is whenever I see the now dead face of Chris McCandless, I can sometimes see my own. That being said, I would like to finish by saying that I think that Chris was an inspiring young man who made reckless decisions. He was experienced, but also ill-prepared as cited in his own journal. 
and he was a rather tormented soul that seemed confused and disillusioned and he was always yearning for more but he was taking steps to figure this stuff out and he was at least trying to live the best life that he could and while his death was a tragedy that should never have happened I believe that Chris was essentially tapping into a longing that we all have and that longing is to know what it's like to feel truly alive and a longing to know that all of this is worthwhile. And that me old flower was the story behind Christopher McCandless and Into the Wild. Thank you so much for watching my video. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss my weekly episodes going forward. And I'd love to know what you think. Does Chris's story inspire you? Does it make you feel mad? Does doing something like this put the fear of God into you? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I will see you in the next video.